<clears throat> All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining my session. I didn't expect anyone to join, actually, because I don't know if anybody play games on the on Linux uh, a lot. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about using gaming Linux uh, gaming distributions and then compare them to the uh, base system and see if they're actually worth it. And uh, <coughs> before that, a little bit of, about myself. I'm a day trade as a developer in Meta, as a, a, an Android engineer. And I have a side hustle running a teeny tiny YouTube channel called Mumbling Hugo. <coughs> and two years ago, I, was, uh, I published this uh, video talking about how I feel uh, after quitting Windows for a long time. And then uh, one of my statements is that I feel lonely uh, because I can't talk about Linux uh, with my close friends and my girlfriend. And uh, people, a lot of people comment in that video down below said uh, that I shouldn't feel lonely at all, which is made me decide to come here and make a presentation uh, to talk to people. So you guys feel free to talk to me after this session. I, I love to meet new people. And the final one is that uh, there's a joke in my channel that I'm a Linux daily user and I dare to have a girlfriend, which led it pretty well in my channel. Um, okay, uh, back to our topic. Uh, why do I want to do this uh, research? It's because uh, ever since Valve started to <coughs> making effort um, in the gaming industry uh, for Linux, there are a lot of gaming distributions lately. And then <coughs> they always make big claims, like they improve the uh, performance and they have better uh, usability uh, for user to use. So I want to find out if those are true. And also one of my uh, favorite YouTube channel, uh, Chris Titus, also said uh, it make, makes no sense to use any gaming distribution. You just need to pick a pure distribution and then tinker it for gaming. So I want to see if he's right. So basically, <coughs> Uh, uh, talking about the gaming rig. So previously, I was using this, well, people start coming in still. Uh, so previously, I was using this uh, thin and light laptop, uh, which is a good piece of hardware because it has two GPUs. So my uh, purpose for making a YouTube video is that I want to make sure uh, I can catch uh, as most as many problems I can find using Linux to set up for games and two GPUs definitely catch a lot of issues and but the issue with this laptop is that it has uh, the heat is affecting the performance a lot so uh, when I was trying to compare between distributions uh, I cannot always make sure the heat condition are the same so I use YouTube channel as an excuse to get my uh, gaming desktop. Uh, it has the uh, 5900X and 32 gigabytes of PDR4 because I use second-hand markets. And then uh, NVIDIA 4070Ti GPU with a 144 hz 4K monitor, which is pretty beefy system. Uh, and the distribution I chose for this uh, topic are First of all, the Novala Linux. It is uh, developed by the famous Glorious Agro. So if any of you have ever tried running AAA games on Linux, you will probably know him. He is the developer who created the uh, Proton GE library, which some, some people say is better than the official Proton, uh, Proton library. Uh, this distribution is based on Fedora. And uh, uh, the official version was uh, previously GNOME, but it has recently changed to Plasma for some reason. But I had to use GNOME for this topic. I'll talk about the reason later. <coughs> the next distribution is called Garuda Linux. It is one of the earliest gaming distribution got, uh, generating a lot of heat in the community. It is based on Arch, and I was using this version, the KDE Dragonize Gaming Edition. The third one is the Pika OS. This is a fairly new one. It's, it is in, inspired by the Novala Linux. 
and uh, <clears throat> it has all the bells and whistles that Novala has. Uh, the only difference is that it is based on Ubuntu, and the official version stay uh, on GNOME at the moment. <clears throat> the fourth uh, distribution is called Regatta OS. It's from Brazil. Uh, it is based uh, hybridly on OpenSUSE because on its website, uh, the developer say it's not uh, based on OpenSUSE. I found a Google snapshot saying it's based hybridly on Tumbleweed and Leap together. <coughs> it is targeted not only for gaming, it also uh, advertises itself as easy to use. It mentioned on its website that user can find everything they need inside a software, uh, software store they have. So you don't have to use the terminal. Uh, okay, there are several honorable mentions that is also good for gaming. Uh, the famous one being the Pop OS and Majero. Uh, they're good for both gaming and uh, as wor uh, desktop uh, workstations. And those uh, below one are the two gaming-oriented distributions. One of them is Chamber OS. And last time I checked, it is only available for AMD GPUs. Uh, it will give you the uh, console experience you can just connect to the, uh, the TV and then control everything using a controller. Uh, <clears throat> next one is called Baza OS. It is based on Fedora immutable systems. It has the desktop and console experience at the same time, and it, is, uh, it supports a media GPU, which is pretty nice. And the final ones, I put them there just because they're famous. Uh, one of them is NixOS. <coughs> Uh, some say it's unbreakable system, and the other one is Blend OS. Uh, the interesting about Blend OS is that it, it provides all the applications from the major repositories. So in one of my uh, video, I test uh, a Steam using the Ubuntu uh, repository in this uh, in this system, and it worked pretty well. I could use it as a I, I can treat all the applications from the container as native applications. <clears throat> all right, back to gaming. Uh, first of all, my girlfriend was able to compile a list of all the common games that all the uh, YouTubers use to benchmark games on, uh, uh, on Windows. But being on Linux, I was thinking about using Mango Hut to record all the frame rates. So I need at least two things. One of them is that I need a game that have a built-in benchmark. So when I run the benchmark in the game, I can just start a recording of the Mango Hut and then stop them when it ends. And the second one is that I need to make sure they have good ratings on ProtonDBs. Uh, so these are the games uh, with uh, all the requirements mentioned above. So, uh, so I, start, uh, I decide to start with them. The next one is that I want to make sure there's no black loading screen inside these benchmarks. Uh, previously, when I was doing the benchmark on this uh, laptop, uh, I was using Red Dead Redemption 2. But the issue with that game is that it has several scenes and then the black loading screen in the middle. Uh, when it's using the, uh, loading the next screen, Mango Hut will record the uh, maximum uh, frame rates of the monitor instead of the actual game and the loading screen doesn't have the exact same time all the time. So you will uh, introduce a lot of noise. And I had to use the final clip of the tool tab, uh, sorry, uh, final clip of the benchmark to uh, uh, run the, uh, to, to do the comparison, which is not as ideal. So I, I delete that one. And because the list become pretty short, I added another one called the Callisto Protocol, which is another new AAA game, which has continuous uh, benchmark inside. <sighs> yeah, there are a lot of requirements I need for this game to work. The next one is that I need to make sure these games do not need major tinkering on my system, because I have to, run, uh, I have to install eight uh, distributions from top to bottom, and then run the game benchmark. Uh, a little bit tinkering on the games will cost me additional time, and then you will uh, introduce more errors. 
So for some reason, Assassin's Creed Valhalla was not able to run on my system, even though you, it is uh, reading as uh, gold on ProtonDB. So I have to replace that with Watchdogs, uh, Watchdogs Legion. I think it's a good trade because these two games are both from uh, Ubisoft and they are released uh, at the same year. So I don't think there's any uh, big differences when it comes to performance. Uh, the next requirement is that I want to make sure the benchmark, uh, the game benchmark can produce at least 40 FPS on the average number because higher the number we have, the more obvious the gap we can see between the different distribution. And uh, without any tinkering, Cyberpunk 77, 2077 cannot, can only stay below that. So I have to let that go. I promise this is the final uh, requirement for the games. I want to make sure there's no glitches when I run the benchmark on Linux. And uh, when I try the Horizon Zero Dawn, it has a lot of glitches no matter if I turn on or off the uh, VSync. Uh, and the glitches will result into uh, Mango Hot recording very low, 0.1% low, which like a three or five doesn't make any uh, good reference point for us. So I am ended up with only three games, F122, The Callisto Protocol, and Watch Dogs Legion. <clears throat> all right, it's time to compare the benchmark. First, first of all, we have Nobala and its base system, uh, Fedora. Uh, we can see it have very uh, identical performance uh, overall. Uh, and uh, it has a little bit slight uh, better uh, number on the 0.1% law on F122. It has a little tiny advantage on the 1% low, but <coughs> and uh, similar performance on the Watch Dogs Legion. I thought that would be the case for other distribution, but it's not. When I compare the Pika OS with Ubuntu, I see a very big difference on the F122. Also, this happened on the Callisto protocol, but it has better number on the Watch Dogs Legion. And initially, I thought there was some mistake uh, I did when I was benchmarking the Pika OS, but I didn't think so after I see the next set of data. Because Regatta OS also show uh, uh, weakness compared to OpenSUSE on F122 and the Callisto protocol, but it has better number on Watchdog Legion. So my guess is that these two kind of gaming distributions that have some initial system tweak, it will boost uh, games like Watchdog Legion, or, but you will regress on some other games. So it doesn't have very consistent performance across the board. And finally, we have Garuda Endeavor OS. Garuda OS is the only distribution I picked for this presentation that can beat its base system. And on the side note, I didn't have time to build uh, the Arch, pure Arch Linux from ground up, so I used Endeavor OS as the alternative. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but overall, for all these three games, we see consistent outperforming uh, performance on the Garuda Linux compared to the Endeavor OS. Uh, but that is not the end. I compare all these distributions per game. So if you, uh, you can see, on F122, we have Ubuntu as the top performer, and uh, Regatta OS the, as the last one. And to remove some of the noise, I pick out the uh, average numbers. I only compare the 0.1 or 1% low. And we see uh, Ubuntu and Regatta OS have around 26% difference in the performance. The next game, we have the uh, Callisto Protocol. Um, overall, the best performance uh, performer was uh, OpenSUSE, and the last one was Pika OS. But after I, I delete the average number, I, I saw the last, uh, the worst performer on the gaming distribution was actually Garuda Linux. And the difference, the distance between the OpenSUSE and Garuda Linux is 
Uh, and Watch Dogs is the only game that all the gaming distributions feeding their base system. So if you can see on the left, uh, you can see uh, Regatta is feeding OpenSUSE, uh, Novala is feeding uh, Fedora, and Pika is feeding uh, Ubuntu. And the uh, difference between the top performer and the uh, uh, worst performer is 13% uh, as well. And this time, Ubuntu is the last one. So what have we learned after seeing this uh, data? So we have seen that both situations where the gaming, uh, gaming distributions are performing better and the base system are performing better. So if you're picking up, <coughs> so I want to answer this question. Are the uh, gaming distribution uh, better in performance? Not necessarily. Because if you, and if you choose a gaming distribution, the worst case scenario you will see is that they will have a even performance, like we saw on Pika OS and Regard OS. And the best case scenario is that even though they sometimes perform better, they don't have very big jump compared to their base system. But if you're using a pure distribution, the worst case is that you don't trade behind compared to those gaming distributions. <laughs> and the best case scenario, you get a stable, stabilized performance. The next question I want to answer is that even though, even if we see uh, no advantage on the gaming distributions, why should we still care about them? Or if we still want to use them? Uh, there are several reasons I can think of. One of them being the driver ready. Uh, especially when you're using a, a NVIDIA GPU. <coughs> All, almost, almost all the time, if I'm installing the gaming distribution, I don't have to worry about the driver issue after that. It has some, it always has some way to help me to install the driver. And the interesting fight is, with Ubuntu this time, if I tinker the option to install the third party proprietary software during the installation, I was able to see a video driver being installed on the single uh, GPU uh, desktop, but that didn't work on the dual GPU laptop before. Uh, the other thing is that when I use the uh, NVIDIA proprietary driver option in the live CD of the Endeavor OS, you also take care of the NVIDIA GPU driver, which means six system out of the eight in this presentation can install a NVIDIA driver without any issue. And the other thing is that <coughs> for AMD, uh, when I was using AMD as a single GPU in my desktop for some time, I wasn't able to, uh, the interesting finding is that OBS was not able to pick up AMD GPU to do the hardware acceleration. I had to install not another additional uh, add-on to make it work which means, but this won't happen in the gaming distribution. That means we have less tinkering need in the gaming dis uh, distros. The third one is that they're always almost game ready. For me, when I install Garuda Linux, I don't have to worry anything about uh, the up gaming application. You have the bottles, uh, Mango Hut, uh, Heroic Launcher, and Steam ready to go. So that is another uh, benefit. Uh, the next one is that some of, the, uh, some of them have additional features like the console mode I mentioned above. And the final one is the big one because Codex is always a hassle for me to install like uh, on the uh, distribution like Fedora and OpenSUSE. And the gaming distributions no matter which uh, system they're based on, always take care of that, which is a good thing for me. And as a content creator, I was trying to make DaVinci Resolve work on my desktop when I was using the single uh, GPU AMDs. I tried several times without any succeed, uh, success, uh, success. So if I were to stay on the AMD GPU, I would probably go with Pika OS or uh, Novala. So that's the benefits of using a gaming distro. But why should you avoid using a gaming distribution? 
I know there are some initial system tweak I mentioned above, but they are both blessing and curse at the same time. I know a lot of people don't like the initial Garuda gaming theme out of the box, but at least with Garuda, you can pick the vanilla version on their website. The, the issue came when I was trying to use Pika OS because Pika didn't use the official Ubuntu repository. And when sometimes the Ubuntu upstream have issue on the repository, uh, the software repository, it goes down to the Pika OS. And the, the regular Google search result won't solve them because it's not the Ubuntu official repository. So I had to join a lot of Discord server to try to browse through <coughs> the solutions the developer has and uh, try to guess which one can work on my system and then make it work. <coughs> Excuse me. And the final ironic part is that I found NVIDIA driver um, easier to break inside a gaming distribution. I have, I have encountered this four times, uh, at least lately. The first time is that when I, after I installed Pika OS, the, game, uh, the NVIDIA driver was working, but when it triggered the uh, initial system update for me, the update break the NVIDIA driver. Same thing happened to the Novala official version last week. I wasn't able to use the official Plasma version because of that. And the third and fourth time happened at the same time when I was doing dual booting Pika and Regatta. One of them, <coughs> one of the, the NVIDIA driver break the other one. So the NVIDIA driver was broken on the Pika OS. At the same time, the Regatta OS didn't work. So I, I searched the solution in the Discord channel, but wasn't able to find any good solution. So I had to reinstall both of that systems. So that is overall for this uh, presentation. But if you want to learn more about uh, gaming on my channel, uh, this is my handle. And I don't identify myself as a Linux expert. I just see myself as a daily user of Linux. So I'm trying to find as many, as I say, as many uh, issues I can find with using uh, distributions or hopping on a new one. And trying in hope that you, uh, other people can use my mistakes as a reference to improve or solve the actual issue. So yeah, thank you for listening, mumbling, uh, listening to me mumbling about Linux again. And uh, I can take some questions now. Yes. With all the installs you did, what was like the what gave <coughs> you the most time, and what was sort of the easiest install? Uh, I think recently Nobala was causing issue. At least uh, when I was trying to rushing the presentation last weekend, Nobala was the most time-consuming one for this one, but it was not always the one causing issues. Uh, I remember on at least on this uh, laptop, Endeavor was taking a lot of time usually to, to install for some reasons, but it didn't take a long time on my desktop. So it, it's hard to say there's a specific one distribution that caused me issues for running the games. Mm. And just sort of as a follow-up, um, mm -hmm. were you doing the tinkering on sort of the base operating system? No, I, I, I was trying to compare them because a lot of people will always use the default setting. So I don't want to tinker them to the same, like using the same kernel and then compare. That will make like no uh, value for the people who watching, uh, watching the video, right? So um, yeah, just making a, as minimal as possible. That's why I was trying to use all the official version on the gaming, web, uh, gaming distribution to see, yeah. Um, I know you were just trying to compare like the um, the different Linux systems, but did you get um, a um, a Windows baseline for all those games? I didn't get a Windows baseline. I got that request a lot, but uh, yeah, I I can do uh, that probably as a future a future uh, project. But the thing is that I almost forgot how to install Windows now. Last time I tried to play a uh, uh, last epoch with my friends. I was trying to install Windows for two hours. 
but uh, but but I will try it again, definitely. Yeah. I'm seeing that the uh, the worst performance with gaming distros in other tests as well compared to uh, the vanilla distros. Mm -hmm. But in your experience, have you noticed any improvements in like latency or uh, consistent frame times? Stuff that doesn't show up as much in just strictly FPS tests? Uh, in, to tell the truth, no. No? Yeah, because I have used uh, Manjaro for a long time, and uh, I think I also used uh, uh, Endeavor OS for a long time. At, as a day to day usage, I didn't really notice any big difference between the uh, consistency and the uh, uh, performance. So because yeah, I, I don't think I noticed that one. Okay. Yes. Um. So because you had to reinstall or install it so many times, did you utilize like some kind of mobile cache for your Steam? Yes. So what I did is that I have two D uh, SSDs. So I have one SSD uh, specifically for gaming. I install everything on that SSD. And then just swap the other one. Okay. So and then just so actually I have just a uh, so the, the reason I want no team, uh, major tinker on this game is because everything every time I add the uh, swap to a new system I just add them to the uh, Jurek blockchain okay. from the start. Yes. Um, so on the games that you tested, uh, compiling shaders before the game starts <coughs> was that like a consistent thing? You yes. I have to wait for that. To I also have a video about the uh, desktop environment. Different, uh, so I, I test it on Nix OS because it's uh, the only OS allow you to swap the uh, environment without uh, losing anything. So uh, I think uh, Wayland was actually better than the equivalent of X11 of both GNOME and KDE. So that is. But sometimes it doesn't work. The the uh, plus uh, plus sorry uh, exit uh, sorry Wayland doesn't work uh, smoothly on my desktop PC 100 uh, percent of the time. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, what would you say is the most compelling reason for gaming distribution and other things you tested? But you guys really seeing performance. Is it, is it right. would be the convenience? Of having yeah, the convenience. Yeah. yeah. That that would be. Will be my uh, go-to. Yes. Do you track what version of the drivers were installed in the different OSs to make sure that it's not just the performance differences are just like what version? That is, of the yeah, game? yeah, that is a good question. But the the, the issue is that not uh, the the version of the media uh, are not shipped with the same version. Like I said, like Ubuntu, they are having. I think they have uh, five thirty-five right now, but uh, on Arch we have. 550 already. Uh, it's, so if I want to just uh, speed up my process, I cannot just, I, that would be a good next uh, follow-up for this presentation. I'll think about to do that uh, on different systems if they have the same version of the driver. Um, so <coughs> with the gaming distribution, do any extra packages involved, or is it just a yeah, they, uh, usually they have a lot of different uh, packages extra picked by the developers. Like Novala, we see uh, it has a lot of uh, AMD uh, uh, proprietary drivers on top of the initial one. But uh, it differs from, uh, from distribution to distribution. Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, uh, so on the laptop, because I have a dual GPU setup, is there any instance where you were able to test uh, the AMD system, stop the game, and just tell uh, on next use if it used to be utilized the NVIDIA um, card instead, just to see if there were any difference between uh, like ease of use specifically? Yes, uh, I think the ease of use part is definitely uh, 
uh, good on AMD because I know in, uh, I think uh, in my previous Intel uh, NVIDIA laptop, sometimes the system just won't start. But AMD, I never had that issue. I had some flat screen issues, but uh, almost always the distribution will pick up the AMD uh, without, being, uh, without me having installed a, a NVIDIA GPU yet. But, uh, but I don't think dual GPU is the way to go, if you want to, yeah, definitely. Any more questions? Yep. I think that's it. Thank you guys for your